Howdy folks, this is Levy Pate and I'm here to talk to you about William Archibald Dunning. So first, I'm going to tell you about his life. He was born on May 12th, 1857 in Plainfield, New Jersey. Two of his uncles served during the Civil War, one of which would die of disease during the war. When he got to college, he would be dismissed from Dartmouth College for an indiscretion. He would then go on to Columbia University where he would get his undergraduate, master's, and PhD. He attended for a year at the University of Berlin where he received a lot of instruction on the scientific approach to history, which really impressed him and would carry on for the rest of his career. He married Charlotte Loomis in 1888, and they would stay married until she passed away in 1917, just five years before he would die on August 25th, 1922. So some more on Dunning's life. Um, during his lifetime, he would write uh, 43 articles on history and political science. He wrote two books on Reconstruction. He wrote three works on Western political theory. Um, he would have a significant role in the American Historical Association and the American Political Science Association. And he would be the founder of the Dunning School, which for our purposes today is kind of the most important thing. So let's look at some of Dunning's key works. One of his early works was Essays on the Civil War and Reconstruction and Related Topics. And he took a fairly um, nuanced view of the Reconstruction period. He said, Reconstruction is to most people merely a synonym for bad government and conveys no idea of the profound problems of statecraft that had to be solved between 1865 and 1870. He would then later go on to write Reconstruction, Political and Economic, 1865 through 1877. And he would write this from the perspective of the North, in which he would say, the social, economic, and political forces that wrought positively for progress are to be found in the record, not of the vanquished, but of the victorious section. And then towards the end of his career, he would write a three volume series of history of political theories. And these three volumes would be on ancient and medieval political theory, reformation and enlightenment, the age of revolution through 1920. So before we go any further, we need to take a look at John W. Burgess. He was Dunning's instructor at Columbia University and would play an important role on influencing young Dunning. Burgess was considered on the cutting edge of historical scholarship at the time. He was a founding father of graduate education in the United States, and he established the high standard of scholarship that the Dunning School would maintain and become known for. So you have the Dunning School interpretation of Reconstruction. It has been broken down into four steps. First, after Lincoln was killed, the radical Republicans began taking over Reconstruction. They began prolonging it in an, in an intent to humiliate the South. Part two was that Southerners had accepted defeat and the changes that came along with it. That President Johnson had established new state governments and had claimed to restore the nation. However, the radicals rejected Johnson's proclamation and refused to recognize the new state governments. So for step three, the radicals took complete control of reconstruction. They overrode the president's vetoes. They instituted a military occupation. They established Republican state governments in the South. They impeached Johnson and came just short of removing him from office. Step four was that the Southern Democrats slowly regained control of their states during the 1870s. In 1876, being the end of Reconstruction with the presidential election that year, 
the policies of the radicals during Reconstruction caused lasting harm to race relations. Those are the four steps that the Dunning School interprets Reconstruction. So now let's turn to Dunning's legacy. Since the 1950s and the Civil Rights Movement, Dunning and his students have been labeled as racist. Now it was true that at that time, turn of the century, 1900s, there was a big growth coming after the Civil War of the racial scientific theory, especially coming from Germany, which as we've talked about earlier in this presentation, German historical practices had really influenced Dunning and the Dunning School, was influencing all American academia around this time, that they were being influenced by these racial ideas. So that much is true. Also, the Dunning School has been considered responsible for creating a negative interpretation of Reconstruction. And that's a little bit inaccurate when you consider the fact that Dunning's book that we discussed earlier, he addressed the fact that the Reconstruction government faced a lot of difficulties and it was not really fair to just describe it as bad government. So he was trying to push back a little bit against the overwhelming negative view of Reconstruction at the time. And the Dunning School has also been categorized as a Southern apologist school. And we'll talk about more about this in a minute. But as we looked at his book earlier, he was looking in that one book, he was looking at the Reconstruction from a Northern perspective. So not necessarily something a Southern apologist would do. So let's discuss for a moment the significance of the Dunning School. As we've been discussing, it emerged during an important time, during the Germanification of American universities, as these German influences like scientific historical practices, scientific racism, these different ideas, some good, some not so good, some bad, were influencing American universities. Um, another part of the Dunning School was that they addressed previously uncovered topics before, during, and after Reconstruction and the Civil War. So they were looking at Southern churches, living conditions of Southerners, the state of the economy and infrastructure in the South. So they were looking at a lot of topics that really hadn't been looked at before. And this Dunning and his students came after him really invigorated an interest in the study of the Civil War and Reconstruction that hadn't really existed before. And they consider themselves historical revisionists because the historians before them had been very partisan that you know because they a lot of them had lived through it dunning had been a kid during reconstruction and so he may have heard a lot of about talk about it when he was growing up but he wasn't from that generation that lived through the civil war and all of that that entailed so that that school didn't have as much baggage as previous groups did and then they were also approaching it from a more scientific approach to history. So now let's look at, was Dunning a Southern apologist? Well, Dunning was from the North, as we discussed, and he operated from a broad viewpoint, usually from the position of the North, as we've discussed before, or the nation as a whole. He admired the achievements of the Reconstruction Era administration, the difficulties they had to overcome, then he also thought a longer military occupation of the South would have been more beneficial. Not something you would really expect a Southern apologist to do. He treated corruption of Southern Republican state governments as part of a larger problem of corruption. He it gave examples of corruption in New York, I believe. So that it's like, it, it was a bigger problem. It wasn't just that the Republican governments that were established were just uniquely corrupt. There was a bigger problem going on. And he also gave credit to the Republican reconstructed state governments for rebuilding infrastructure and starting public education systems. So not really something you would expect from a Southern apologist. So in this book, I looked at the Dunning School historians 
Race and the Meaning of Reconstruction, published by the University Press of Kentucky. They explained that often the Dunning School has been dismissed for the reasons of being accused of racism and stuff like that. It was seen as, like I said, a Southern apologist school. But as this book pointed out, that it was, oh, that it has been oversimplified, that they did address some important stuff that had not been done before. They were a very important school in interpreting Reconstruction. That had an, that it was one of the first actual historical schools of looking at this seriously from a serious scientific historian approach and has often been dismissed out of hand unfairly because of racist accusations. So overall, um, I would say that the um, Dunning and his school has got a unfair treatment perhaps in the last half century in that regard of how they've been interpreted. Um, that maybe it is something that historians should go back and look at a little bit more carefully before dismissing it. All right, well, that's been my presentation on William Archibald Dunning. I'd like to know what you, you all think about him. Um, I found this an interesting um, research. I didn't really know that much about him. Um, coming into it, I was expect expecting someone a little bit more pro-South, but from reading this book about Dunning and his life, and that it seems to be he's not quite as much as people have made him out to be, but still an interesting study nonetheless. Um, so yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Um, we have the discussion board and comment section down below on this video, and um, see you all in class.